All right, well, I'm back after a week off of vacation, and I missed a whole bunch, uh, including a lot of talk about the Safety Act and the Pretrial Fairness Act. No cash bail. What else is in this thing that passed in early 2021 uh, that uh, that ultimately is uh, raising a lot of concerns? Well, we'll get into that right now with State Senator Darren Bailey here. He's running for governor as the Republican against the incumbent Democrats, J.B. Pritzker. Senator, thanks for taking time with us this morning. You're starting a bus trip. Where are you guys headed? Hey, good morning, Greg. It's great to be with you. We're uh, heading over here just a little bit to Belleville and and then we're bouncing up to Quincy, and tomorrow we'll be in Peoria and Rockford, and, and after that we'll be up into the Chicagoland area, Crystal Lake, Mundelein, Lyle, Homer Glen, and, McC- and McCook. We'll wind that up on Thursday. So, Senator, um, of course, the, 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 the Safety Act passed uh, early January in the early morning hours in the previous General Assembly. It narrowly passed. Republicans were all opposed to it. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of opposition all throughout up to now. And uh, like I said, over the past week or so, there seems to be an increased amount of awareness on it. What do you think's uh, adding to that increased amount of awareness, considering that it's been over a year or so? a uh, year and a half uh, since this thing has been passed leading up to the January 1st, 2023 enactment? Well, I think that the reality is that the truth is finally getting out. And, and Greg, I want to give a, a you know center square a shout out because you guys do a very good job of just simply telling the truth. This is the way it is. There's no partisanship involved. And, and there are a few other news sources across the state that do that, very few. But uh, the reality is that People in Illinois aren't paying attention to Illinois politics. They're they're paying attention to the you know to the to the glitz and the glamour of what's taking place in Washington. When in reality, everything everything crime, safety, high taxes, failed schools, it's all happening right in in, in Springfield. And I think the fact that uh, it's election year and the truth has recently been revealed in mass uh, to Illinoisans, and they're learning what this is going to do. Uh, you know they're 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 quite shocked about it. It's kind of like a few years ago when the uh, license plates were were increased, you know, and and no one really knew about it until the law took place and everyone's fees sometimes some of them doubled. So that's really what's taking place. J. B. Pritzker has never been transparent. They do this as you said, said uh, in the wee hours of the morning, and uh, then they they seem to stifle the. Uh, uh, the news press with a with with a whole lot of other stuff, and people just kind of forget and move on. So uh, now that people are completely fully understanding what's taking place, they're quite shocked and they're quite angry, and and uh, so much so that you know we have uh, states attorneys across the state, Democrat and Republican, now filing suit against J.B. Pritzker and Kwame Raul. Why these two men sit and contend and say that. None of this is true. Nothing's really going to happen. So uh, I, I think um, I think that's what's going on, and the people are waking up, and uh, hopefully we'll keep them woke up th- with information and, and empower them to, to stop this nonsense that the uh, government sometimes uh, – Uh, pushes on the people of Illinois. We're talking with State Senator Darren Bailey, a Republican candidate for governor. Of course, the election is November 8th, and believe it or not, but early voting starts September 29th. Uh, So we're coming up upon Mm -hmm. that here pretty quick. Uh, Senator, uh, of course, uh, it's a Democrat-dominated legislature. We've already seen them come back and do a few uh, modifications to the Safety Act. Uh, An attempt in the House to modify it even further uh, didn't get passed into the Senate. But uh, what do you see happening after the election? Do you do you see some changes coming to the Safety Act, and what do you think those changes could be? I think the people are going to demand it, and I think that changes are going to be a full repeal. They must be, and then we have to all sit down at the table. You know, Greg, I, I think a lot of your listeners, because of your reporting through the Center Square, are aware of this, but – you know, this is J.B. Pritzker's narrative and his alone. These last uh, four years that this man's been in office, um, whatever agenda uh, he has decided or, or he desires, uh, that's what they push through. There's no input. that The Safety Act had no input uh, early on from law enforcement that the legislation was drafted and it was laid in front of them. And uh, they became furious, FOP and the sheriffs and other groups. And uh, but nothing was done. And then then as time went on, uh, the 
this last uh, early this session. You're correct. There were some modifications, but they were uh, they, they they were nothing. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was really a slap in the face that that the changes that that should have been made that weren't made. So I think we have to have a uh, a full repeal. And and as the voters of Illinois learn how egregious and how terrible this is. I think that I think that's going to be the message at the ballot box this year, and I think that's going to be proven. Senator, is there anything to say though about um, those who say you know the pretrial fairness act portion of the safety act about no cash bail? Um, it, it, it's meant to ensure that those who might get charged with uh, lower level crimes, uh, they're innocent until proven guilty. Uh, and uh, even the governor, he he, he made an example. Uh, I, I don't know if it was a specific case or just a hypothetical about a parent who uh, shoplifts some diapers, uh, not able to to pay to get out of jail. Uh, I mean, is that uh, is is there is there something to to speak to that particular issue about uh, uh, questions of fairness? Actually, there is. We need to sit at the table and hammer that out. But again, Governor Pritzker and he sat down with the, with the Democrats behind closed doors and drafted this without any input from the Republicans or law enforcement. And 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 that's exactly the problem with Illinois. That's been going on too long. It was going on with Mike Madigan, and now it's going on with Governor Pritzker. And it's, it's got to stop. So we said at the table, we'll come up with a solution, and, and we'll we'll help this situation. But you don't you don't fix the situation by literally giving criminals you know uh, more fairness and than, than law enforcement. So long, this bill has crippled law enforcement. This bill on January first will uh, will release violent prisoners, rapists. Thieves, carjackers, murderers—that's what's going to happen, and and we see what we see that taking place in Chicago right now. Every weekend is filled with violence because they're essentially doing the same thing because they're they're refusing to prosecute these criminals. So on January first, when this law is enacted and these violent criminals are, are let out of uh, jails across Illinois, we're going to see the same lawlessness across the state that Chicago is facing. And uh, law enforcement knows this too well. That's why many of our, you know, 1,700 vacancies in the Chicago Police Department, hundreds of vacancies in the state police, thousands of vacancies across the state in our sheriff's departments and, and in our municipalities. This has got to stop. This is not how our constitutional republic, a land of law, is designed to operate. State Senator Darren Bailey with us. A few other things, if I could, um, real quick here. Uh, the governor, while I was out on vacation, uh, he <clears throat> modified his COVID-19 orders, saying that uh, it's no longer required for uh, people to prove vaccination status or to test regularly in schools. Uh, I guess, is it, is it an indication of the governor's policies weren't really... Uh, uh, substantive they weren't they they didn't really help uh where, where do you stand on that greg that is 100 percent the message i have been saying this since may of 2020 when i sued him and won that suit and yes it's election season he's thinking the people of illinois are simply going to forget and move on and that's not going to happen so uh, he destroyed the lives he destroyed schools he destroyed futures he destroyed businesses People of Illinois aren't forgetting this anytime soon. We've also got the ongoing issue of migrants who crossed the border illegally being bused to Chicago. The governor's uh, executive order last uh, a disaster declaration last week. Uh, what needs to happen here? And if you were governor, uh, how would you work with with Texas, for instance? Well, the problem right here and what's going on, and, and I don't know that it's so much working with Texas as it is demanding something be done by our president. There's there's no city in this nation that has the resources uh, to take to take care of this. So I think we need to demand that uh, Biden uh, fix the border. That that is the problem. Fix the border. We shouldn't have illegal people coming into this nation illegally. Period. Full stop. That's it. So I think that's what Pritzker needs to do. But unfortunately, he agrees with him. So. Um, I think if Governor Pritzker uh, wants to house these people, and it's very unfortunate when you take a look at uh, our problem with homeless veterans and, and homeless Illinoisans across this state, and and um, you know he, he's he's more than taking care of of uh, these people. I you know let him take care of them on his own, let him put them up in his high on his own dime if that's uh, if that's what he wants to do. But but until we fix the border. We have to address the problem and and uh, and, and and deal with this and and uh, you know he he needs to be 
calling out to President uh, to Joe Biden to uh, uh, to, to give uh, Illinois the resources as well. But unfortunately, uh, our tax dollars are are supporting uh, his agenda. And then finally here, State Senator Darren Bailey, a lot of endorsements being thrown around here and there. Uh, I think the governor's uh, been standing alongside Planned Parenthood and several unions. I think he's got uh, one of those lined up here soon. Um, talk about the importance of endorsements and, and what kind of endorsements have you been able to garner? Well, we've picked up the uh, Fraternal Order of Police endorsement uh, all across the state from Chicago to, uh, uh, you know, to, to some of the Department of Corrections. And uh, it's very important to realize this is the first time uh, the police with the FOP have endorsed uh, a, a, a governor candidate in the general race. So uh, I'm ex- expecting to pick up the uh, sheriff's endorsement. Uh, so, so I think that says a lot, you know, with, with law enforcement and how uh, the concern. And if you don't have a land of law and order, you essentially have nothing. So I've been given an A rating from the NRA to protect our Second Amendment, again, uh, endorsed by the the pro-family, pro-life group. So at the end of the day, endorsements are good to waive. I think you've got the stark contrast uh, between J.B. Pritzker and I when Planned Parenthood, uh, uh, you know, is is so eager to endorse him and yet law enforcement and, uh, and family groups endorse me. I really think that says it all for Illinois. But at the end of the day, um, I, I want the endorsement of the voter, and I think we've got that. As Cindy and I are, are up in the Chicago as much as we are, just because it's it's, it's a different world up there. Uh, reaching out to the people, people everywhere on the street, in the businesses, in the churches, uh, they are tired. They are tired. They're aware something's wrong, and, and as now they are learning the repercussions of these uh, these. Uh, uh, out of control crime bills and out of control tax bills and out of control, you know, failed school bills that Governor Pritzker has been pushing for four years. They realize something has to change. So I firmly believe on November 8th, I will have the endorsement of the people in Illinois. State Senator Darren Bailey, he's on a bus tour. You'll see him all throughout the state. Greatly appreciate your time this morning. And I imagine we'll talk again multiple times before uh, early voting and the November 8th uh, general election. Have a have a safe travel, all right? I appreciate the opportunity. God bless you. Thank it, you. Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News.